so hey guys and welcome to the spotlight in this video we're going to be talking about exhaust velocity of a rocket so let's get started this channel is everything related to space so if it's your kind of thing be sure to subscribe this is the third video as a part of my video series rocket specs well if you remember in the isp video i talked about uh, how isp is the uh, force per weight flow rate and then how I told about that it should be force per mass flow rate. Force produced by an engine divided by the mass flow rate. Or well, I was a bit wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Before you click off the video, I didn't give out any wrong information. It is indeed a measure of the efficiency of the rocket, just like the ISP. But it turns out to be that it comes in kilometers per second, meters per second, feet per second. You get the idea. And that's the exhaust velocity of your rocket. And it is also a measure of the efficiency of the rocket. Well, how do I know? Well, with the third law of motion, we know that mass of the rocket times the velocity of the rocket is equal to mass of the total propellant spent times the velocity of the propellant. And since we aren't happy with that kind of relation, we can divide time on both the sides. So we get on the left hand side that uh, velocity by time is equal to acceleration. And on the right hand side, we get that mass by time is equal to mass flow rate. So, by the grace of uh, Newton's second law of motion, we know that mass times acceleration is equal to force. So, we get that force is equal to mass flow rate into velocity of the propellant or the exhaust velocity denoted by C. And if we bring uh, mass flow rate on the left hand side, what do we get? Force by mass flow rate is equal to exhaust velocity. Voila! Well, if you want to physically think about it, just freeze the rocket for one second. All the force which, is, which it's getting is due to the huge mass of gas coming out of its rear. And the more massive that gas is, the more force the rocket gets. And the faster that gas is, the more force it gets. Crazy, right? I know. Well, if you haven't noticed, ISP and exhaust velocity just differ by an arbitrary constant, g. And that is not the gravitational acceleration of the particular planet. It's the gravitational acceleration here on the surface of the Earth, 9.81 meters per second square. Well, if you multiply g uh, in force per mass flow rate, it becomes force for force per weight flow rate, and that's the ISP, right? Well, how is knowing all this useful? Well, while designing a rocket, they conduct a static fire test of the engine or all the of the rocket itself, and in the static fire test, we can easily calculate the fuel being used by calculating the difference between the initial mass of rocket and the mass of rocket after the static fire test and we can easily know the burn time since we set it and therefore we can calculate the mass flow rate by dividing the total mass of fuel used divided by the burn time and we can also calculate the force by uh, recording the push with which the engine produces against our uh, holding structure and now we can calculate the ISP and the exhaust velocity so we can know the efficiency of the engine and eventually we can calculate the TWR, the delta V, the payload capacities and we have the whole specs of the rocket. Guys remember all the calculations done in this video are done uh, taking consideration that uh, the flow rate uh, of the engine is constant throughout which of course it's not because if we take the calculations into a real life scenario um, we'll have to integrate stuff and that will make grasping the things and the concepts difficult at first so if you want a more complex video on it comment down below and if you make it this far thanks and drop a like subscribe